And then just out of nowhere it cuts to... Knuckles. And on that note, I might take a quick bathroom intermission, so carry on for a moment without me. Alright. This is a meteor herd. It's... A lot of people say that, like, the last levels of each story are, like, the worst Knuckles levels. No, Meteor Herd isn't, like, a great Knuckles level, but it's... Um... Again, at least you can see where you are in it, which puts it above a lot of other uh, Knuckles levels. And by that, I mean one in particular. It's still probably the second worst, but not the outright worst. Like... No, y'all. That said, um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, like, break open one of these doors. Because there's, like, a switch inside one of them. I need to press in order to get the last upgrade in terms of, like, cannon, I guess, that Knuckles is supposed to get. Oops. Uh, is this it? Yes, okay. Alright, so... Uh... Half tempted to wait until Nate gets back from the bathroom to... Show off the upgrade, but... Fuck it, he knows what upgrade this is. And what it is. Some heckin' epic shades, my dude. These are, uh... Not exactly the most useful upgrade, but they're kind of useful, I guess. You can, like, use it to see hidden shit. Like this extra life, and these rings, and not that meteor that just spawned. And those actually don't exist unless you wear this the sunglasses. Which is interesting. I don't, just a I don't think glasses typically have that effect when I put my glasses on, like... Mine do. It's not like... Oh. But yeah, and also you can't jump without glasses on, which is accurate to real life. Yeah, I might always just, like, go onto my forehead like that when I jump. Yeah. I just jump and suddenly my vision gets completely, like, <laughs> dickin' ass shit. <laughs> and I just can't breathe. I say that sentence a lot, like, dick and ass, and I don't even entirely know what it's supposed to mean. <laughs> like, I use that for, like, sometimes to mean, like, really cool shit, but also sometimes to mean, like, really it's bad shit. Stupid, yeah. <clears throat> it depends. Also, these things are interesting, because you, like, have to do this, like, spin attack to break them. Yeah. I mean, it kind of looks like all the... Emeralds for this level are just in space. Limousine, but they're in space. So, let me see. Actually, is that like the first time I've made a Homestar Runner reference on this? Uh, at least since coming back to this? I know probably probably not, actually. I did like my... literally like talk about Homestar Runner during the ukulele thing. But, you know what's funny is like I had never really seen the series that much. I just know like Shay was a huge fan of it, and and then you told me you were like you liked it so much that it was like the only media you would consume for <laughs> for like a whole period of your life. Yeah, like Homestar Runner is probably the main reason I have such a brain diseased vocabulary right now because a lot of the humor of Homestar Runner just comes from them phrasing things really weirdly, like a bread tangle of pizza. <laughs> One of my favorite lines is like, But Prinnick Pal Strong Bad, I only stole one Sega tape. That's just it, Thompson. Or Tompkins. You could have stole upwards of one Sega tape. Do they still do things at all? Uh, very sporadically. Ah. Uh. Like, they used to do things, like, all the time, and then they, like, came back in 2014 after a long hiatus, and then... They've done a few things since then, but it's definitely not as active as it used to be. Which is kind of to be on, to be expected, considering the brothers chaps who made Homestar Runner. I'm just gonna restart this because I'm making no <laughs> progress here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they actually like went on to industry jobs 
at one point, at least Matt did, because like he was like a writer on Gravity Falls, and I think he voiced some of the extras, and like him and Mike also made a short cartoon series for Disney XD called Two More Eggs, which I haven't actually watched. I probably should at some point, just because I'm curious. Yeah, Sega Tapes is another one of my, just those interesting things that I started saying because it was in Homestar. Because, like, that wasn't even the first like time they friend. said it. That wasn't even, like, the first time they said it in Homestar. It was, like, I think the first time was, like, during a B mail where Homestar said, like, he was, like, answering an email about, like, uh, making things out of other things. And he talked about, like, making coasters out of Sega Tapes. And it was just, like, him sticking drinks on some, like, Genesis cartridges, or Sega tapes, as they're known as, in canon. Yeah, I had an older friend that would always refer to, like, levels in video games as boards. That's what that reminds me of. Yeah. I've met people who do that, too, I think. I wonder if that's just, like, a thing that people <clears throat> used to call levels at some point. Kind of like how Europeans used to call fighting games beat-em-ups and beat-em-ups brawlers. Oh, yeah. My friend used to call fighting games and knockout games. Hell yeah. And like platformers were run and jumps. Is that actually a thing or were you just like... That's like a... that's like a British thing. Cause again, I've never heard that. That just sounds like something you made up. I mean, I believe you, but it just sounds like a thing no, that somebody no, made No, it was jump and runs, not run and jumps, but same oh. difference. <laughs> I'm way far away from where I'm pretty sure that uh, gem world was. But yeah, Bread Tangle of Pizza and Sega Tapes have just entered my vocabulary entirely due to Homestar Runner. <laughs> What's some other things? Oh yeah, like, Dag, yo. Like, that I always was, wondered like, what that was. Well, that's yeah, like, I heard that's that like from actual me. slang, but I heard it in like the first Teen Girl Squad comic. and Because, like, uh, What's-Her-Face says that when she gets punted by a dinosaur. And that just became a thing that I say. Yeah, because I remember I, in the song... Uh... I wish by Skilo, he says like, "Dag yo, I never understood that why, the f like why they get the fly girls and me, I get the hood rats." So like, yeah, it was actually said in a normal rap song at least at one point. Yeah. Yeah. How did you like not experience <clears throat> Home Star Runner in any way though? I. What was it on, like, Newgrounds? No, it was on its own website. I don't know, because I, I, like, I would always vaguely hear of it here and there, but I guess never just had the inclination in my mind to check it out. Uh, up until... Up until the beginning of 2009, I didn't have, like, super consistent computer access, because I had... I had my old HP computer from, like, 2001 that I would... It was my mom's, but... Yeah. I guess I'd be on that one a lot. Yeah, I used to watch Homestar yeah. on, like, the Wii's internet browser a lot, too. Oh, yeah. Just because I also, like... We had, like, a shared family computer that wasn't always available. So I had to use that to access the, like, the internet a lot of the time. And also, like, the PSP browser, which some cartoons... Because, like, that had an older version of Flash, so it wasn't... Some of the newer cartoons wouldn't work right on it. Oh. Yeah, okay, like... I'm just cursing this level, I guess, because I'm not finding anything. God damn. Let's try that again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah my, I had that one for all the way since like 2001, and uh, around the time that I got, when I moved into this house, when I got into high school, uh, my mom would always like unplug and hide the keyboard when I, when like she wasn't using it, so I couldn't just like randomly use it because like she was like she always thought that like me playing games would get her a virus. <laughs> <laughs> I love old people as computers. Yeah, I feel like exactly like I, that. I feel like after a certain age, you probably like, like just all of your knowledge about a lot of subjects just vanishes. So, like <laughs> my dad literally like used to work as like a computer tech support guy, and now he knows like nothing about computers and has us <laughs> constantly troubleshoot his computer for basic shit. Yeah. But yeah, she did that so much that um, the. The keyboard we had was not a USB keyboard. It was plugged in via what you might know as a PS2 port, which is what it's actually called. It's not... Yeah, the PlayStation 2 port. Yeah. 
That's actually what that port is called, but it's used for certain things like that. But it has these little, like, contacts in the middle of it, and, like, she would unplug yeah. it and plug it so much that it got bent to the point of, like, unusability, so... Yeah, that's like the older kind of keyboards. Yeah. When did, like, USB keyboards start becoming more common? Because, like, I know we had a PS2 keyboard until, like, 2009. Yeah, I'd say, like, 08, 09 is at the very least when they were a thing. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, she, like, destroyed that unintentionally just by trying to restrict my access to it, and then I didn't have another one until... Well, my dad got me my own computer in 2008, but I had, like, kind of sporadic access to it because I lived with my mom for a while. And then... For a while, it had issues with, like, the uh, the port to plug in headphones and or anything like that, so, like, I had... I oftentimes couldn't, like, actually have sound unless I fucked around with, like, certain things, but, uh... For a long time it was like that, and like finally in 2009 I had everything fixed to like work properly and... Finally found a emerald. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, fuck it, I'm just gonna like, I spent way too much time on this level, I'm just gonna look at hints. Fuck it, yeah. Now where are the hints? <laughs> Did you think there'd one. be a hint? A container within a container. Living in a Box by the band Living in a Box from the album Living in a Box. It's my second favorite right next to uh, Lucas Graham by Lucas Graham from the band Lucas Graham from the album Lucas Graham, not to be confused with his second album Lucas Graham. Yeah, I think Living in a Box only had like two albums and both of them were just self-titled albums. And I think they also had an EP also named Living in a Box. Yeah, I think Lucas Graham had, like, three different albums just all named that, and, like, he's supposedly part of his own band, but it's also just called that, so... <laughs> yeah. Is that, like, a band anyone actually likes? Because the only thing I know of them from is, like, that one song that constantly plays in my store and is terrible. Is it the one that goes, like, Mama said Wait, that it was okay. Okay. Oh, that one, yeah. What? That says, was like, seven? You can... It sounds like he's faking his own accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like a black guy wearing blackface. Yeah. <laughs> At my old work before my current job, all they would ever play for like 90% of every single day was just like modern country, like bro country. It was like all they would fucking play on the speakers. Yeah. So I had to when hear like... like the entirety of Luke Bryan and Florida Georgia Lines <laughs> discography. God. And I can... Uh, That's a form of firmly, torture in some colonies, you know? I can firmly say that Florida Georgia Line has never made a good song in their entire career. I actually have I a conspiracy theory. Tree. <laughs> I can... I actually have a conspiracy that Florida Georgia Line are just AIs because they constantly talk in autotune even in their interviews. I hate this fucking level. <laughs> oh god. So now this is going worse than uh, Death Chamber. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, this isn't actually, like give us that much trouble the first the first time, time we yeah this. we just kind of breeze through the whole thing so yeah hang on <laughs> is there a is there like a gem roll down there i'm gonna be so mad oh in the time to get the... air big air featuring nate wait no it's getting warmer it's probably over here somewhere no here oh mm. hmm. this is weird but I have a lead. At least we're, like, so... figuring out something, yeah. Yeah. The best part is this is just all gonna be uncut, because I can't just cut out parts with commentary. <laughs> yeah. What kind of fucking... This is raw, unedited gameplay, you guys. Yeah. What uh, kind of other... fucking bitch-ass edits their video game let us play videos? People don't like me because I do raw, unedited commentary. <laughs> I like how I don't even need to, like, have seen the video to know that's a DSP quote. <laughs> It has the exact level of unwarranted self-importance. You know, on-the-fly reactionary commentary? Wait, hang oh. on. It's in here, isn't it? Why is there no exclamation? Because it's, there it's the second on the list. Oh, oh! It's also not beeping. I forgot it! Yeah, you told me that last time. You said, like, the mod kind of makes things a little weird. Yeah. But it's better than just having the one thing be tracked and nothing else. Yeah. But I still have the... 
premium. Oh, I didn't even notice I had this hint. Oh my god, a Sonic lyric just said die. Yeah. Almost as scandalous as in Crash 4 when Dingo Dial says the word bastards. How was that game anyway? It's... It has one major problem in that the crate placement can be really bullshit a lot of the time. But it's otherwise probably the best Crash has ever been. Like, if it weren't for the bullshit crate placement, it would be a 10 out of 10. <laughs> As it stands right now, it's almost a 10 out of 10. It's like a... But it's still, like, probably the best Crash game. Like, being real. I assume it's kind of, like, in the same visual style as the remasters. Uh, not the exactly. Remakes. It's a little bit more of a, like, abstracted, cartoony style, because uh. the remakes were developed by a different studio, and, like, Toys for Bob, the developers of Crash 4, have, like, their own kind of aesthetic they like to keep to. So it looks like a little more like what they would look like if they got to it instead of Vicarious Visions. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's... I think the big thing that I intended to notice with the game, aside from it just feeling really nice to play, is the fact that you have like different playable characters that are all just platforming characters, but still control and play like very different to Crash. That makes the... Game. That keeps the variety they were going for with Warp, but the gameplay consistency of Crash 2. It's like, Warp just kind of has a shit ton of minigames that play nothing like how Crash usually does. Even like though better. I know, obviously, dick about Crash besides, like, your LP, I uh, think it's kind of cool how they actually brought back Tona, considering she got sucked into the void of censorship for a little while there. Yeah. I like how the original intention and, like, her old ass design was to make people like interested in her in certain ways, and <laughs> nobody was. But then they like made her look like a fucking rainbow lesbian or whatever, and <laughs> now everyone wants a piece of that action. And also made her ass gigantic. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I think I just killed a man. Oh! I got a lead on there it! There we go. Yeah, I'll probably have, like, an abridged version of this and an unabridged version, maybe. I don't know. Let's, except I wouldn't actually do that, because that wouldn't make any sense since... You know, like, it's like how that one less player had, like, a, a censored and uncensored version of his, uh... Hell yeah. Or he censored it with farts. <laughs> Good old nostalgic rage. HQ. Yeah. <laughs> it's closer. Found it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so did I. That's great. Dude, you suck. You're, You're just so fucking, fucking inbred. <laughs> Maybe I should suck uh, Chris Cockney's cock all night. Maybe the I should make fun of one of you guys. insult in existence. Yeah, Chris Crocker. <laughs> when did I get a Chowag key? Stand it. My ego's got so big lately, it's better you could see it.